This is a video tutorial on understanding color spaces. This is intentionally very simple just to give you a basic understanding of what happens in the various color spaces that are available within Adobe Photoshop, Elements, and other programs. To start, this is a CMYK color space. This represents cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. This is the type of color space that is used when printing magazines or similar that needs to use a printing press. Notice how the colors are fairly muted. I have an example here of red, green, blue, and black. Neither of these colors looks particularly saturated or strong. This is because the CMYK color space can only handle a certain amount of colors. When you want to add more colors, a standard digital camera is going to work in sRGB color space meaning when it takes a picture, it's going to be taking it in sRGB. Notice that the colors are a little bit brighter than they are in CMYK. This is because it takes the colors that are allowed in the CMYK color space that adds even more colors that it has available to use. sRGB is intended for monitors. So things that are on websites or otherwise viewed on the monitor are perfectly at home using the sRGB color space. When it comes to professionals working on their photographs, they should be using Adobe RGB. Now once again, this diagram shows that the Adobe RGB adds even more colors on top of the sRGB. Now here's the thing, the human eye can't perceive all the colors that are going on inside of sRGB, never mind perceiving all the colors inside of Adobe RGB. We can't see it and the monitors can't produce it. So in one aspect, it seems like at this point, it's complete overkill. However, what ends up happening is, in this simulation, you can see the RGB color space allows for bright colors without any banding. However, when we go down into the CMYK, it shows that the colors are muted and you should be able to see banding as it goes from one color to another. And this is a limitation within the certain amount of colors that you have available in CMYK. This is why it's preferable to go up to the RGB color space. It's solely used as one way to avoid banding as well as getting brighter colors. When you're working in sRGB and you're using adjustment layers to use levels, curves, contrast, and other tools, you might introduce banding, which is why you should be working in Adobe RGB color space. This will help avoid the banding. The other thing that helps is working in 16-bit instead of 8-bit. If you don't understand the difference between 8-bit and 16-bit, please go look it up. And once again, that's another example of a way to avoid banding. Now the three color spaces I have here right now, CMYK, sRGB, and Adobe RGB, are about as standard as you're going to get. When a file is going to be printed, it's expected to be CMYK. When a file is going to be used for the web, it's expected to be sRGB. And when a file is going to be used for photography, it's expected to be Adobe RGB. However, there are plenty of other color spaces that are available. For example, there's Profoto. Here's an example of another color space that adds even more colors that Adobe RGB, sRGB, and CMYK would otherwise have to cut out and literally throw away that extra information. So I understand what you might be saying, that if Profoto is a color space that can hold even more color data, then why wouldn't we work in that? Well, you certainly can, especially if it's for your own personal use. However, when it's going to someone else, for example, to be printed or any, any other sort of thing, you have to understand they may not know what Profoto is. They should, but they might not. So if you stick with the standard of Adobe RGB, this way there is no confusion, no one has any question about it, and you'll always look like you know what you're talking about. Now the other thing to think about is that if your monitor is only displaying what's in this range and your printer is only able to print what's in this range, then anything above and beyond this really is overkill for the most part, especially if in the end it's going to go for editorial or other printing, it's just going to be clipped down here anyway. And then you do introduce banding anyway once you make that conversion. But this was just my attempt to give you a very simple explanation on color spaces and how they relate to each other and how as you go up the spectrum you're able to attain more colors 
until you reach a point that you can't add any more colors, and at which point you're going to end up being clipped off anyway. There are different types of monitors. On the left hand side, we have, as an example, a very inexpensive Dell monitor. It's a 24 inch generic 8 bit depth, meaning it's going to display approximately sRGB color. On the right hand side, we have an NEC monitor. This monitor supports a 10 bit depth, and because of this, it can display more colors. This inexpensive Dell monitor. When you're going from sRGB to Adobe RGB, you may not show the change. Okay, you may not actually see it. This is because it can't handle all the colors that are showing in Adobe RGB. However, if you are using something like this NEC monitor that has the higher bit depth that can support more colors, when you're going from sRGB to Adobe RGB, it may actually show subtle changes within the images. Now here's the thing, this generic Dell monitor that only supports 8-bit depth is a generic off-the-shelf that only costs approximately $200. The NEC monitor, however, that supports more colors and is designed for photography and photo retouching, the monitor itself costs approximately $850. Now this is a huge price difference, however, there is definitely a difference between the two monitors. Now I chose these two monitors specifically because these are the two monitors that I actually have in my own studio. Now I'm going to choose two examples to show you what I actually see when I'm working. I'm going to open up the first image and I'm going to tell it to discard the embedded profile, meaning I don't want it to color manage at all. It's just going to open up the image. Now this image is completely unretouched. It just came right out of the camera, and it's displaying the color as it's displaying the color. There, there is no shift. There is no change. You know, uh, with the camera, push the button. This is what came out. If I go up under Edit, Convert to Profile, and I tell it to use the profile Adobe RGB, and I click this Preview button on and off, you're not going to see a color shift at all primarily because all the colors that are inside of this image are currently supported by Adobe RGB. So I can click this and nothing is going to change. If I go up under sRGB and I do this preview on and off, now here's the difference. On your monitor right now, I'm clicking this preview on and off and you look at that red, more than likely you are not seeing any difference. And the reason that you're not seeing a difference is because your monitor's bit depth is only 8-bit. When I'm doing it on my 8-bit Dell monitor, I can't see this color shift. But when I do it on the 10-bit NEC monitor, I can see the reds changing colors. It's getting brighter and darker. It depends on whether I have this sRGB selected or no profile selected. I'm going to select a different image to give you a better understanding. However, I did select that image because I wanted to show you that my two monitors show to me two completely different results. The 10-bit monitor does show more colors. Once again, I'm going to discard the embedded profile so it does not color manage. And it's going to open up this image of a butterfly. And right now, you see the blues that are in here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see more detail. But once again, I'm going to click Convert to Profile. And as it's in Adobe RGB, I can click Preview on and off. And you are not going to see any change. It's going to look the same. And the reason is Adobe RGB can handle the colors. This time when I select sRGB and I turn this Preview on and off, you should be able to be seeing this difference. It's soft, it's subtle, but it is there. When the preview is on, you have slightly muted colors. If I turn the preview off, you should be seeing slightly brighter colors. Now I'm going to go one step further. I'm going to hit cancel. I'm going to add a saturation layer, and then I'm going to boost the saturation. And this is the saturation off and on, off and on. Once again, I'm going to come up under Convert to Profile. 
As I turn it on and off with Adobe RGB, you don't see a difference because it's all supported within the color space. If I change it to sRGB, once again, you should be seeing a definite difference. Now, here's the thing. You're seeing the difference in sRGB. When I raise this up to Adobe RGB, you can't see the difference. So, once again, if I select Pro Photo, you won't see the difference because Pro Photo can handle even more colors than Adobe RGB can. And if I can barely see a shift in my 10 bit monitor, then there's no way I'm ever going to see a shift in Pro Photo. And one last example to show you if I select CMYK instead, you can see a huge difference because it cannot reproduce this color it throws it all away and this is what's going to print it's going to be completely flat and muted you're going to lose all this excess detail so it's very important to understand where your image is going to be going to and keeping it under control because if you do too much and make it too bright because your eyes can't see all the colors your monitor can't display all the colors and your printer cannot print out all the colors if you found this video useful, please go to www.theartofretouching.com where you can find more tips and tricks to make you a better photo retoucher.